Natalie was first diagnosed, I remember we got on a call with um, Tim and Monica from Rett Syndrome Research Trust, and they talked about this idea of gene therapy that was brand new and hopefully coming one day. Um, and that gave us a lot of hope, but again, it was very, like, very far down the road. Um, and the research has moved so incredibly fast, and we follow it as much as we can. Um, and we're so excited about the prospect of any kind of treatment, because right now there is no treatment for Rett syndrome. There are some drugs that can help with one symptom here and there, um, but to have an actual treatment that could really benefit benefit the girls like Natalie, and um, that's that's very promising. So yes. Uh, so Natalie, um, Natalie suffers from seizures, and uh, that's I'd say that's uh, from what we understand very common with girls with Brett syndrome. Um, so that that's one thing that has as of recently been something that we've had to um, navigate and uh, work through, um, working with our healthcare professionals on what's the best pa you know path forward, whether it be medications or just um, you know whatever uh, options are available there. I I think honestly for me, in I think Malls as well is the communication portion of it with just her being able to talk to us and tell us what she's thinking, what she's because. If she's anything like, I mean, she's pretty much like mom and I, so I'm sure there's a million thoughts going on through her head. And she's, you know, very much a, a social bird. So I think that having her being able to speak with us and just tell us what's going on, what's wrong or anything like that would be phenomenal to find um, a way to unlock that. Mm -hmm.